Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Eunice if you're new here. Today we are getting therapeutic with some air dry clay creations. At least I find playing with clay so therapeutic and calming and it has been quite a while since my last air dry clay creations video where I made some candle holders and I still have a lot of leftover clay from that project so I thought it'd be fun to get some use out of it and make some fun new things. So I was on Pinterest looking for some ideas for this video and I found so many that I wanted to recreate and I couldn't narrow it down into a single video so I decided to make two. Today we'll be making two vases and a decorative bowl and then next week I'll be releasing a part two candle holders video so stay tuned for that. And yeah if you're curious for some unique air dry clay ideas then keep watching. For the first project we're going to recreate this unique bud face from Etsy. The clay we're using is this natural clay by Craftsmart. I really like how this stuff feels like the kind of clay you throw on a wheel and it feels very natural. But the downside is that it can get very tacky so I couldn't use any wax paper or anything to protect the table. I just had to go directly on the table. An upside is that this clay is really easy to smoothen out with water and it absorbs water really well making it easy to fix mistakes and blend pieces together. So we're going to start by rolling out some clay into a ball. I got mine to the size that would fit in both hands. And then we're going to start pinching out the flaps. So there's six flaps on this piece and we're going to do some rough pinching around to mark where those six flaps will go. And then we're going to continue pinching each flap outwards, grabbing more clay from the center. You want to make sure that your flaps are not too thin so that they don't become too fragile when dry. And while doing this, I also tried to attain a star-like shape with the flaps getting thinner towards the end. Once we have the flaps as big as we want them, we're going to create a hole in the center for where the buds will go. I used the end of a thick paintbrush to do this. And then we're going to mold that hole outwards to make it bigger and to make those walls around it a little thinner, pushing some excess clay out into the flaps. If you look at the original piece, the flaps really stick upwards and outwards, almost looking like ears. <laughs> so to create that upward look, we're going to scoop out some clay around the hole in between where each flap starts. And that's just going to give more height to where the hole of the vase is to the top of the flaps. So as we bring more of that clay outwards, the flaps are going to get bigger. So what I did was cut off some excess clay using this palette knife. And I also used the same knife to shape each flap into that ear shape we were talking about earlier. With the top being wider than the bottom half, like the half of a heart. I don't know if these visual metaphors are helping, but I'm going to add another one. So you can imagine this face as sort of like a fat apple with thick slices taken out of it. We're going to continue doing this, molding out the flap, smoothening it out while maintaining the shape and cutting out excess clay if needed. And once we have it at the size and shape that we want, we're going to smoothen it all out with some water and leave it to dry on some wax paper. I let this sit thoroughly for about 6 days and this clay does take some time to dry. I don't know if it has to do with it being natural or if because my piece was pretty thick at the base, but you can tell it's dry when it becomes very pale and chalky. Once the piece is fully dry, we're going to give it a thick coat of white acrylic paint. It is the next day, the white paint has dried up and now we're going to line the edges of the flaps with a dark royal blue color. I think gold would look so pretty here too, but since I'm using gold in another project in this video, I decided to go with the blue. And now it's just a game of precision and patience. <laughs> we're going to need a very thin brush here to carefully line the flaps. I found it really easy to hold the vase with my fingers in the grooves as I focused on each flap. This was as satisfying to do as it looks. I love how the blue line goes all the way to the center when you see it from the side. So I made sure to line it all the way and a little into the vase hole. The next day I took it outside and sprayed it with this gloss finish sealer by Aileen's. 
I sprayed it three times from about 10 inches away on each side and now that it's coated, we have our funky little bud face. I put this cute little faux flower in it and this is how my bud face turned out. Moving on, we are recreating a very minimal and modern upside down U-shaped or should we call it a rainbow vase. So the arch has been a huge trend lately and I love how curved the core pieces really help break up lines and add an organic feel to an area so I was really excited to try this one out. To start off, we're going to create a shape cut out on a piece of paper. A gridded or dotted paper will be helpful if you don't have a protractor like me. I used the circular base of a vase to guide me as I drew this arch shape. And then I cut it out and set it aside. We're going to start out with a pretty big chunk of clay so that we have enough for the size of the vase and then we're just going to flatten that out and if you don't have a rolling pin like me, you can use a glass or wine bottle and we're going to roll it out until the clay is about half an inch thick and the thicker the better as it'll make the standing vase a lot more sturdy and less fragile. Now we're going to cut out that arch shape using the paper cutout that we made earlier and basically draw around it with a carving knife or in my case a palette knife. We're not going to worry about smoothening it out as we'll do that with some sandpaper once the piece is fully dry. Now we're going to create one more arch for the other side of the face and let both pieces dry. This also took about six to seven days to dry. Uh, once they were dry, I used some sandpaper we had around and smoothed out the pieces. This clay sands down really well and finely, so you can be very gentle with it. And this was also a really good time to fix any unevenness. Now that both pieces are smooth, we're going to wipe it down with a wet paper towel to remove any excess dust and then prepare a paint color to coat it with. So I really wanted this piece to be organic, non-glossy, and have a very light terracotta color. So I mixed some white, this mustard yellow paint that I have, some red, a little bit of blue to make this pale terracotta shade. The blue is going to help dull out the color and add depth so that it's not too peachy and help create more of the natural terracotta-ish color. And then we're going to add in a lot of baking soda to create that texture. And we're just going to paint our pieces, letting it dry in between painting each side. Acrylic paint dries pretty quickly, so I just let the paint sit out as I waited for each side to dry. After letting the painted pieces dry overnight, we're going to put the pieces together to create our vase. While looking for some sort of box, I decided to use this toothpaste packaging. <laughs> it was literally the perfect size for the vase that I wanted, and I cut out part of it so that the height of this box is a little shorter than the vase. Now that we have the holder part of the vase ready, we're going to super glue the box to one of the clay pieces. And after waiting a couple minutes, we're going to glue the other side to the other clay piece, basically sandwiching it and propping it up so that it's drying evenly and balanced. The next day after the glue had fully dried, I basically went in and also painted the sides of the vase with that same light terracotta color. I also went in and painted part of the inside of the vase just so that if you're looking at it at a higher angle, it looks like it's all part of one piece and that you cannot tell that it is a cardboard box. 
and that is it i love how this turned out and i had some faux flowers laying around that i received as a gift during christmas and this was the perfect face for these flowers For our last project, we're gonna create this clam-shaped bowl. I'm also seeing them being called a bowl with ruffled edges, or I also saw one titled a gold-rimmed bowl. So there doesn't seem to be a common name being used for these, but I am seeing them trending on Pinterest and I'm so in love with how these look. They're so unique and I think they're a really nice coffee table or shelf decor piece. And for this project, we're gonna start again with a ball of clay and roll it out into a flat circle. Once we have our large circle, we're going to cut out some wavy lines around the circle to create sort of like this flower shape. And this doesn't have to be symmetrical at all, nor does it even have to be a flower shape. You could even rip out parts of the clay for a more rough look. Now we're going to line a bowl with some saran wrap so that the clay doesn't stick to that bowl while drying. And then I just scooped the clay and folded it in like I'm making a taco bowl to get a general shape and so that I can insert it into the bowl easier. Once we have our clay piece in the bowl, we're going to start shaping it more and smoothening out the folds. I even shaved off a piece to create the shape I want. This clay was a little tough to play with, it would break if I folded it too much, so I had to be very careful here. And now that we have our desired bowl shape, we're going to let that sit and dry. After drying, we're going to sand out some of the rough edges with some sandpaper. This time, I did it over a paper bag to collect all of the dust. And once we have our smooth bowl, we're going to coat it with some white paint. I added a tiny bit of that pale terracotta color from Project 2 to make the white more of an eggshell white so that it looks more elevated and high-end. And once that white coat is dry, we're going to carefully add a band of gold around the edges with some liquid gold leaf. My friend lent me this stuff and I love how pigmented and non-yellowy this gold is. It has really strong fumes though, so I did it outside while wearing a mask. And you want to be very careful with this stuff. Open the windows up or go outside if you can and make sure that you're using this in a very well ventilated area. And it's okay if your gold band isn't perfect, you can always come back and clean it up with some white paint. I ended up doing this while watching some TV at night, and it just looked so much cleaner afterwards. Now that everything is dry, we're gonna spray this with Aileen's Glossy Finish Spray. And for some reason, the spray made the gold edges not as shiny gold anymore, so I ended up having to go back to re-add the liquid gold leaf. And that is it, guys. We have our clam-shaped bowl. I think this is such a unique accent piece and I'm so happy with how this turned out. And that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed these air dry clay creation ideas. Let me know below which one was your favorite. I think mine has to be the gold rimmed clam shaped bowl just because I was really unsure that this is gonna turn out well. I was a little afraid that the clay was gonna crack before it dried up, but I'm so happy with how it turned out. So it's definitely the most rewarding of the three. If you'd like some more air dry clay creation ideas, then make sure you check out my candle holders video, which I'll link right here. And I'll be releasing a part two for that next week. Don't forget to give this video a 
a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to this channel to see more DIY and home decor related videos from me. When you subscribe, make sure you hit the bell next to it as well so that you're notified when I upload future videos. And go ahead and follow me on Instagram as well to keep up with my project updates. I love connecting with you guys over there. And if you end up recreating any of the projects from this video, then please tag me. I would love to see them. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one.